Hi everyone, it's Sarah here and this video is all about the Squeak Dreams DIY cage setup. Probably the thing I like most about it is the way that it looks, it's just nice and modern and it's nice to be around, it fits in well with the rest of the room and this is closely followed by how easy it makes it for me to look after my piggies. So because it's up at tabletop height it's really easy to clean them out and there's also a lot of integrated storage in with the cage. I also wanted to make this video to help anyone who wants to have their own similar DIY timber built cage and really we'll run through everything to do with the cage, so the materials, the measurements, how it's all put together and the cost of things. So hopefully if you're looking for inspiration and motivation to do something similar for your own piggies but you're just overwhelmed by all of the questions in your head right now then hopefully this will answer a lot of them and help you on your way to making your own cage if that's something you want. We'll also have a look at some of the imperfections with this cage and the things I would do differently if I had to build it again. And just to say this video is purely about the cage itself, none of the bedding or any of the furniture or anything else that goes in it that also sort of contributes to the setup. If you do want to hear more about the other aspects of my setup then please ask in the comments and I will make a video on that. Okay so we're going to start off by looking at the size and the base of the cage. The cage is 70 centimetres wide by 2 metres long and if you work in CNC cage grids this is a tiny bit less than a 2 by 6 CNC cage and this size is suitable for up to 4 sows or 3 boar guinea pigs. And the bottom of the cage is one continuous piece of wood. Now this stands on two IKEA storage units. The IKEA units that I've got are called Bitrade and I don't think IKEA makes them anymore but basically they were a cheaper version of the Calex system which is really popular and I'm sure IKEA will continue to make it for years and years to come. The reason why I chose Bitrade and not Calex is because the Bitrade was slightly shorter and because this room isn't that wide and I've got my desk and my chair across from the cage that seven centimeters would have kind of encroached a bit too far into the room. And there's advantages to standing your cage on something like these IKEA storage units. Firstly, the base of the cage doesn't need to be fixed into the storage units. Yes, if you give it a hard push, it will move, but in this room that's not going to happen and it's got two on each side, so it's really secure. Secondly, obviously the storage units are for storing things and if you have guinea pigs or you're planning to get them, well, you, you will either have a lot of stuff or you're about to get a lot of stuff. So in these boxes under here, you could store everything you need for your guinea pigs such as their cleaning supplies, their healthcare supplies, grooming, fleece items, all of their cage furniture. The only thing you might struggle with is a big bag or a big box of hay. As you can see, the cage looks really similar to the Bitrade IKEA units underneath it. And that's because this material is the same as what IKEA uses in its cheaper budget style furniture. The wood is called Conti board and rather than getting something from IKEA and having to modify it and make it into the shape you want, which might not always be ideal, you can actually buy Conti board, the material, cut to size and do your own IKEA style cage from scratch. What you will need to have on hand is some white iron-on tape. Now this is used to cover up the raw edges of the Conti board once it's been cut. So the Conti board is the main material of the cage. The other material is obviously the plexiglass panel running across the front of the cage. I used plexiglass that is three millimeters wide and I think it's a bit more sturdy than the two millimeters one. I will say it does have a slight sort of warp in it though, although it's really only noticeable from the side.
For the base, I just worked off how big I wanted the cage to be. Now I already had the IKEA bitrate units and they were 70 centimeters wide, so that was the width of my base piece. And then initially I decided on the cage length as 2.2 meters because I wanted it to come right out and really provide as much space as I could. However, two meters ended up being the maximum length of plexiglass I could have, which there was no getting around it. I had to reduce the size of the cage slightly. So we went for the two meters length. And then moving on to the side panels, I looked at how high I wanted the cage sides to be. I had a cage like this previously and it was 30 centimeters high. And I just felt it was a little bit too high. So I wanted to lower it a bit from my previous cage. So the sides are 28.5 centimeters high. Whereas the plexiglass, which comes down in front of the base, is 1.5 centimetres higher. I had to think about how the sides and the back would attach for the back piece. And I decided that I wanted the screws coming in from the back of the cage so I couldn't see them from the side. And that meant the back had to be the full width of the cage. So the back piece worked out as two metres long by 28.5 centimetres high. And because the back of the cage comes right across, that meant that I had to reduce the width of my side pieces by 1.5 centimetres. So the side pieces are actually 68.5 centimetres instead of the full 70 centimetre width. But of course, I wanted my water bottles to be held up by the back piece. So I basically calculated a higher piece that comes up to 39 centimeters so I can screw the hooks in for my water bottles. I did this on my previous cage, it worked really well and it continues to work really well for this cage. Unfortunately it does mean I can't move them around but then again I'm not overly fussed about that. They always just have their water bottles and their food bowl in the same corner of the cage. Okay, so where to get your materials from? Once you've noted down all the measurements you know you want, say white conti board and 3mm plexiglass, then ideally you would find a local timber merchant or builder's merchant that stock these kind of materials and that can cut the pieces to size for you. Now that might sound like it could be expensive getting someone else to cut it for you, but it's really not. If there are builder's merchants, they're usually selling these sorts of materials in much bigger volume volumes so they're only cheap and they can cut it in super quick time. If you can't find a local merchant like that then it could be that you can get the Conti board and possibly the plexiglass too from DIY places in the UK places like B&Q or Wix maybe. And the last resort would be to order the materials cut to size online. Now I know you can do this for plexiglass unfortunately it is quite expensive because with delivery and everything it ups the price but start off with your local area and you'll be surprised how eager builders merchants and other places like that would be to help you out. Well the cage is simply screwed together. Firstly we attached the back piece onto the base and we marked maybe every 20 centimeters or so drilled a pilot hole and put a wood screw in there. And these are the type of screws that I used. They were just available from the timber merchant. And then we put a couple of screws from the back of the cage forward to attach the two side pieces. Simple as that. So then we had the plexiglass to do. Now there are different ways of attaching plexiglass. I think some people have glued it on, but I wasn't sure how that would look and how maybe it would discolor over time. So I went for the uh, maybe slightly risky option, which is to drill a hole through the plexiglass and screw it into place in a very similar way to how we did the rest of the pieces. The only thing with drilling through the plexiglass is you have to be careful because it's a brittle material and obviously you're working near the edge of the perspex so you might crack it and unfortunately that's what happened to us <laughs> so I do have a small crack in my plexiglass well done to anyone who noticed it because I don't really notice it myself although at the time I was pretty gutted and I did debate whether I should get a new piece of plexiglass I thought no let's 
just have it it's fine I will live with it <laughs> so yeah that is one of the imperfections of the cage and another one is related so because I wanted the crack to be at the far end of the cage where it would be less obvious I had to turn the plexiglass the other way up and this meant that the sort of rough edge where they cut it is along the top of my cage so it's barely noticeable but there are like little chips made by the cutting machinery and it's just something that is a very small imperfection but you can make sure you avoid it by having your plexiglass the right way up and being super careful when you attach it onto the front of your cage. And as you can see, we've got these white blobs all around and they are basically screw caps hiding the screws just to make it a little bit neater. I won't take one off because they are an absolute nightmare to get on and off and I think once I managed to get the last one on, I said to myself, I'm never touching these again. <laughs> But since then they've covered up the screws excellently, none of them have ever fallen off, so that's all good. So before we moved on and put the plexiglass front onto the cage, I had some raw edges that I had to deal with, and this is going back to that white iron-on tape. So all I had to do was iron on the tape and then cut off the overhanging edge with a Stanley knife down these two side pieces. And it came out pretty neatly and was really easy to do. The only thing was my Stanley knife wasn't quite as sharp as it should have been and the edges were a little bit rough where I cut off the overhanging bit. So my advice would be either cut it before, as I did for the rest of it, I actually cut it with my rotary cutter for fabric cutting, or make sure your Stanley knife is nice and sharp so it can cut that excess off in one smooth motion. was the cage basically built there were just a few final finishing touches to make one of them was the fixings for the water bottle so you can get these screws with a hook on the end from any DIY shop and I measured the um, water bottle attachment and how far apart those bottom ones needed to be and then I put the top ones ever so slightly further apart marked it on with pencil and then just manually pushed in those screws with hooks on into the side of the Conti board and they've held up great ever since then. I think the water bottles look nice and neat and modern and they're easy to get in and out. The other finishing touch was of course sealing the cage and this was also surprisingly simple and easy for me to do. I didn't need any help with this part. All I did was I got some clear aquarium sealant. It's available on Amazon and I think I actually have it in my storefront link which you can find in the description below. But yeah, if you've ever had to seal anything, then it was really easy. And I just squirted it along the bottom of the cage, up the sides ever so slightly by maybe an inch and a half, and then um, pushed it with the, I think I used the back end of a spoon. <laughs> and the sealant has stayed perfectly clear, hasn't discolored or anything. This would be the one thing that maybe requires maintenance first, but so far, so good. And also the sides of the Conti board are wiped clean. So if the guinea pigs ever get any mess on the side of the cage, just like with the plexiglass, I can wipe it off. And once the sealant was done, I think it took maybe 24 or 48 hours had to be left to dry. Then the cage was completely finished. So we actually did it all in a couple of days. And before that, the planning and measuring and thinking about it didn't really take that long either. So if you're looking to upgrade your piggy's cage, you have an empty space that's just crying out for a DIY cage, then I hope this video has given you the inspiration and information that you need to get started. If you have any questions, then please do post them in the comments and I will try my best to get back to you. Also, if you already have a DIY cage, let us know in the comments how it went for you? Was it easy to build? Did you use similar methods and similar materials? I'm sure it would be really interesting for a lot of people. And that rounds off this video on everything to do with the basic cage setup and building it. I hope it's been useful, I hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't subscribed yet then please do. I post on a weekly basis about all things guinea pig related so if you have guinea pigs or you're researching to get some then I hope the channel will be really useful for you. That's all from me for now and the piggies! Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one! Bye bye!